Hi everybody, and welcome back to the Friday live stream. Today is going to be a little bit different because my homework for right now is I need to pick a. Turn this up a little bit. Sorry, I need to pick a uh, an, an unaccompanied piece to play on Monday this week and on Friday this week. So that's today's Friday. Uh, unfortunately, I. I'm not sure that I will be able to join you during this time next week. Uh, I, uh, it'll be a little late. I'll, I'll try to get home and do it right away. But because <clears throat> uh, I'll be playing this concert that I'm preparing for right now at a, right around 3 o'clock uh, at school, though. So uh, I might start my stream next week at 4 or so. Uh, or maybe just skip it altogether. I haven't taken a week off yet. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, that being said, we're going to... We're going to look at a bunch of different unaccompanied pieces and see what we see. I haven't chosen a piece yet. I have a stack here. If, my, if I look redder than normal, it's because I'm going to start with Shazam a little bit. Um, we've got Hoffman 4 miniatures. We've played some of these on the stream before and uh, and just kind of worked on them. So, I, But I thought we'd look at them in, uh, together a little bit and just sort of see, like, does this fit the spirit of... Uh, I'm playing f as a part of a recital for a band camp. So if you're joining me from the most, uh, the just uh, an hour ago Zoom class that we did, welcome back. And uh, if you're watching this in the future, uh, it won't matter what I'm doing it for. But suffice it to say, we're going to play a little bit of brass quintet uh, and quartet music. And then other a couple of other brass uh, players are going to play unaccompanied pieces as well. And uh, that, all of that together only is... 15 minutes, so I can't pick a really long thing, but I also can't just, I don't want to pick something that's uninteresting either, right? And I think for the purposes of a middle school and a high school band camp, uh, I don't want to play anything really too challenging to the ear because I'm not sure that that'll be palatable for that audience, right? But at the same time, I don't want to, I, I don't want to undermine it and just you know, kind of pander. I have an idea of what I think will be really worth worth doing. Um, but I thought I'd start with the stuff that I don't think I'll probably do, but I just need to work on anyway. So um, I'm also trying a slightly different couple of settings on my stream. So let me know if it lines up well or if my audio is bad or good or indifferent, right? Um, I know you can probably hear my computer a little too loud now, uh, but hopefully it's not it's not distracting. So what we're going to start with is, well, first we're going to play a couple notes. I do a, a very quick, this might be interesting to those of you who have done a lot of these streams and are warming up with me and practicing with me and doing all that stuff. When you want to get back, I haven't played in an hour. We just warmed up together uh, an hour pr prior for an hour. So I, I was a little bit tired after all that. And I thought, well, I'm just not going to play till my stream. Well, okay. But I need to get like back in the, in the swing of things so I can start practicing again, right? So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll play an easy note. And I'll play a tritone. And then I'll play this little pattern that sort of gets me chromatically back into the first note. So no matter how that first note feels, when I come back to it, I get it in the right spot. So it sounds like this. It allows you to add air as you go up, right? I can do that anywhere. Just sort of wiggling around there, right? Not doing anything too terribly... Uh, 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 important but also not too terribly difficult right so that's all i wanted to do now we're going to get into it so we're going to do some shazam and we're going to we're going to look at everything seriously as a potential you know component of uh this recital this little mini recital coming up and so if i was going to play this i mean i better be ready for it right so uh, the, the hardest part about this one is that it starts on G on top of the staff. And that doesn't sound so hard, but when you're a little bit nervous and, you know, you're a little bit 
either tired or I don't know. I, I, I will have done an hour and a half uh, uh, sectional and you know warm up and sectional prior to this, and I think I'm first on the program. So I'll have to just pick this note out of thin air. So let's try that. Da, 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 I believe. See, missed it right away. It's always easy to get it again, so let's wait a second. Okay. A little better, not, not super perfect, but I've got to remember to keep my muscular pad kind of forward on this and keep my anchor composition, right? It's also a piano G, so that's also. And then this one you miss. You're supposed to, it's a grace note on an E. I'm not sure that you're supposed to sound like you missed it, but that's always what it sounds like to me. the introduction. So uh, I, I can work on that. That won't be too hard to get in really good shape in two days, right? Not a big deal. So uh, what is going to be hard? Well, some of the fingering parts of this are pretty rough. Um, and it's, like I said, it's very challenging to the ear. So I, I'm not sure that a lot of people will want to listen to this kind of music. But uh, if you're listening to this, uh, you know, go ahead and tell me. Do you, do you like this kind of music? Do you think that middle school and high school uh, uh, students will like this? In some ways, the, the, less they're, the less familiar they are with normal classical music, the more receptive a lot of people are to this kind of thing. I played, one time I played for middle school and elementary school students, and I played the um, uh, Krill by uh, Robert Erickson. Robert, yeah, Robert Erickson. Uh, which, if you don't know, is a, a piece about Bohemer Krill um, and the crazy things that he used to be able to do on the cornet. And so you have to do a crazy extended techniques. You have to sing in between notes. You have to play with valves out. And so there's this little section on the third page, I think, where you do a trio with yourself. I think I've even done it on this channel before. And so I was I was really working hard on this. And so I had about 35 seconds of it really worked out. And so I played it for them in my little trumpet showcase and they got such a big kick out of it that they asked me to do it again. And I was like, really? You want me to do that? Like, yeah, I mean, cause it's, it's, I mean, it's really out there. And they just, I think they thought it was funny sounds that they wanted to hear me do again. Right. So in some ways this can be really uh, approachable in a different way. And I'm not sure that the composers would like that, but I don't care. I, as long as I faithfully reproduce their, what's on the page, the audience reaction is allowed to be whatever it, it needs to be, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't purposely put them uh, in a position to be made fun of, let's say, but if people think the sounds are funny, that is helping them to understand, uh, to, to, to sort of start to get their, their sea legs about a new type of music. And so it's okay to have that reaction of like, oh, that's, that's a silly sound. But then as you understand that music and you get older and you, you know, uh, uh, you, you learn about the theory and you learn to hear differently and, uh, I mean, everything, right? You, your, your musical tastes mature and suddenly you might be saying like, oh, I, I really like that kind of music. But if you didn't have that introduction where you thought it was silly and sort of enjoyed it, on a different level, then you might just always dislike that because, well, it's not the Haydn or whatever, right? 
And I think that's the wrong attitude. So I would never put Folke Robbie, um, which is the composer of, of Shazam, I would never put this music up as a joke, but I also, uh, I will put it up seriously from my end. And then if the audience laughs joyfully, then I think that's an okay uh, expression of their reception, right? As long as I don't ham that up too much. It does say check position and foothold as if preparing a complicated trick. So I'm not sure that the piece takes itself too seriously, uh, which I didn't do. I'm supposed to sort of get ready. But they, they actually mean a magic trick, uh, I think, even though I always thought it was like a gymnastics trick. So anyway, here's, here's the gymnastics part. There's some of the stuff I have to work on, right? It's it's all normal scales, but you got to know where they are. And I'm still, I'm getting them okay. So I have to do a lot of that. So let's, in the spirit of, let's practice this a little bit, right? So the first thing is to get the right notes. And uh, I'm going to take my pencil. There's a D natural that I'm playing flat. So I'm just going to I'm just going to re remind myself of that natural, just very light mark. And that's a chromatic where I want I want it to be uh E flat, right? But it's it's E natural on the way down. And I really shouldn't mark in my original like this, but I bet I'll need that next time too. On this a lot my in my life I haven't recently but the the licks come back pretty quickly as long as you hear them well and your fingers have practiced them uh, there's one coming up that I don't think I ever got so that might be problematic now but we'll see uh, let's see if we can go back a little bit This, I have to get the timing of this right. So it's so it's one, two, three, uh, one, two. I'm marking in this a lot, but I've also marked other spots a lot too. So I'm not too worried about it. Let's see if we can play that. I know that was sort of a shape instead of a sound, but. Almost. And it's, it's sometimes helpful to keep a metronome on for this stuff. It's supposed to be 132. Let's see what that sounds like, first of all. I think we can do it, but we haven't done it slowly yet. So let's let's work our way up there. This is Shazam by Folke Robbie, F-O-L-K-E-R-A-B-E. -E. It might be Folk Rob. It might be Folky Robbie. 
Um, I say folk, folky raw Robbie because I think I heard it once that way. But every time I ask someone, that's why pronunciations are names are so hard. Uh, every time I ask someone, they give me a different answer to this particular composer. He wrote a lot of stuff, so I, I need to ask composers instead of trumpet players because the trumpet players don't know. The composers know. Anyway, great piece. Shazam is, is a, a great unaccompanied piece. And in case you're wondering, it's about 10 minutes long. So, it, and it could easily be cut into a seven minute version. Uh, and nobody can play this piece because it takes too long to learn. Uh, but it really is fun. It's not that it's too hard at all. I mean, it has high G's in it and high E flats and pedal F's and C's. But double pedal C is in there, I think. But boy, is it great. It's like exciting. And there's a lot of choreography. That's what people don't like about it. We'll get to that. Anyway, that was just answering my student's question in the chat. What are you, what are you working on? So we're going to do unaccompanied stuff for the whole time today. And I'll, I'll probably get too tired after about an hour or so. Ask your questions now. Uh, all right, let's go back a little bit. Let's, let's listen to that tempo again. Yeah. Zachary Levi. <laughs> I don't. Oh, see, I don't. I, I'm not into the. He says it's a superhero joke. I don't. Uh, I've never been into superhero culture, unfortunately. I, I'm into all every other kind of geek culture, you know, ner nerddom that there is. And I watch some of the shows a little bit, but I just I didn't have comic books growing up. I I don't know if I wasn't allowed them. Uh, my mom, if she's watching the stream, could tell us, but I mostly just read library books because they were there. So even with or without pictures, but I just, I didn't have access as much. And then I lived in Kentucky when I grew up in pretty rural Kentucky too. So we didn't have like a comic book shop that we went to. Uh, you'd have to be driven to it. And I didn't do that until I started playing Magic the Gathering, uh, many years later. So anyway, sorry, I don't get any of the superhero jokes. But I know, I, I know it's me missing out. You don't have to tell me. All right. These are great breaks, by the way. All right, let's see what we can do. Uh, that's the way I would practice these things is in I'd find the place where I, I'm screwing it up I would go slow and build it in and then I build more and more onto the tail of it and maybe even give myself like uh, some markings like I can I have the, the uh, a, a line just sort of a I don't know how to describe it. And when I try to show things to the camera, it doesn't work. But I basically just put a, a very slightly either ascending or descending line, depending on which way the notes are going, that kind of connects the two, almost like a beam, but above the notes or, you know, whichever direction, that shows me that those notes are chromatic. In other words, there's nothing between them. And then I use this, this the, the, the carrot, a lot of people use for half step. I use that for whole step. And I know that's confusing, but just get your own music then. I don't care. If my thing is not your thing, use a thing that works, right? Well, 
also have to get softer there and I, it's really hard. The dynamics in this piece, you can obsess over them. So I'm not going to spend too much time doing that. The, here's the lick I never really worked out. And you can hear how fast, like, they're so fast. Um, that one's not too bad. It's not one scale, and that's what's hard about it. It's that's a B major scale, but there's a D natural right before it, so it's not all B major, right? It's almost uh, F sharp. Man, it's really hard. It's got to be something. Not quite any kind of minor scale either, and that's why you have to be able to switch quickly. Um, no, it's nothing, it's nothing, right? So I just have to learn it by rote. done this before this kind of additive chunking um, it wears you out and if you make a mistake during it and you keep that mistake you learn it wrong and it's extremely bad I have done that with this lick before and learned it wrong so right now I'm unlearning an old version that I knew and trying to relearn the fixed version that I fixed maybe two years ago but they're both almost as strong this late in the game. And so I have to make sure that I don't make a mistake. And of course, I'm also looking at a bunch of sharps and then there's a natural and a flat, like, cause he's re-naturalizing E sharp already bad. And then it's natural flat E is what I see on my page. So just looking at it is terrifying. And so you, you can't, right? You don't look, that's the secret. So we got to make it to the to the the uh, uh, stage directions, right? So let's let's try to get this a little bit, and and then I'll move on. I can practice it later, but. So very exciting when you finally start moving. I really want to record this piece someday and do a stereophonic recording where it really, you can hear the movement left and right. I mean, I could do it here right now. I'm doing it, but uh, I would like to set it up even further apart so there's more microphone separation and, um, you know, just do it in a hall where 
it's got to be dry enough to hear the separation, but wet enough to sound nice and warm. So I'm not sure where that is, but I'll find it. Uh, anyway, that's the first part of this. Uh, the next part is sort of slow. Uh, but if I wanted to do um, this for a recital, like a mini recital, right, I might be able to do like the first, the, obviously the opening and that first section, and maybe the second section, which does sort of start to get out of control. And then not do the last section because I, I, that I definitely don't have time to practice. So what I'll do is I'll do a little run through for you guys right now. And you can hear what we've practiced so far, see if it sticks. We'll hear what I haven't practiced, but we'll ju I'll just try to get my way through it just so you can hear kind of the sounds of it. I might have to go back for some things and do some bad practice habits there because I haven't done my due diligence, right? But we shall see. So, and we're going to take a break. So I would love some questions. If Even if my student is the only one on, ask me a thousand questions so I can re rest. to rest a little bit, there is, in fact, a fermata over the bar line. We'll see how this goes. turn the page here but I don't I don't really need to
second half. <laughs> it's not a good place to end. I'm not going to play this piece, but a really great piece. Uh, I will play the ending for you because it's my favorite thing in all of absurd trumpet, uh, trumpet unaccompanied li trumpet literature. And, uh, uh, and no, the questions don't have to be trumpet related, but please appropriate to the stream. I know that's a disappointment to some. But anyway, so uh, I will, I'll show you what it is, uh, what the piece ends like, and then I'll show you what it looks like on the page, because that's the best part. I don't know if I can do this, but... <laughs> That's how the piece ends. So you have to do this zigzag pattern with your horn. And the best part is, I'm going to make sure that this gets on there. If you can see this, there's a picture of a little, a little stick figure man with a trumpet in his hand at the end of the piece, right? It's the best. I saw that. I, my, this was on my dad's shelf. And it's a little oversized, which uh, composers, if you want your music played, um, make it a little bit bigger and people will grab it, but then also put a copyable version inside that's eight and a half by 11 so that lots of people can play it, please. But anyway, it's, this cover was like seductive to me, right? It's like, it's bright pinkish red and Shazam, I mean, come on. And then it's big. And so I picked it up off the shelf and sort of thumbed through it. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Oh, there's like arrows. I don't know what that is. And then I saw the stick figure at the end and I said, I'm playing this piece. I don't care what it takes. I'm doing it. So anyway, no questions. Any questions from the, the peanut gallery, as they used to say? No, nothing, huh? Well, I'll show you some of the op other options. We've already done Hoffman, and I think Hoffman is a little too out for this crew. If I'm going to do out, I'll do Shazam. Henderson, same thing. We've worked on it a little bit. If I knew more of the movements, I think some of these would work, but I don't, and I don't have time to, I don't want to half learn them and then be nervous for it. Fishtail profiles, always good. Uh, I can put these together in a pinch, no problem. I can, I can play them in an hour, right, uh, or less. Uh, the plogue postcards is the one I think I'm going to do because a, a movement of that is kind of long, but it's very listenable, and it's actually also approachable for most high school students even though it's not easy, it's not an easy piece, but if you only do one movement of it, it's pretty reasonable. Um, but there's also this, this Solomon, uh, Edward Solomon dialogue for trumpet solo and imaginary friend. And I've, I've worked on this a little bit on the stream before, but I'll, I'll show you a little bit about it. <clears throat> so what you do with this piece, it says, first of all, B flat trumpet with tongue in cheek, all right? It doesn't really mean to put your tongue in the cheek, I don't think. I hope I can't play a trumpet that way. But what you do is you sing against your playing. So, so I might play, right? And you have to sing like like really try to sing, which <clears throat> I'm very bad at. No, da 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 dia, and so on. Right? That's that's what this piece is about. So now I can do this piece in the recital hall in front of a bunch of middle schoolers and they will laugh and it would, it's, a, it's a funny piece, it's supposed to be funny. Um, so maybe I'll work on this instead, right? Um, it's, it's got two more pages on it. 
I don't really have to work on it on stream. You've got a taste of it. It's a very funny piece, and uh, it's not it's not as easy as it seems like it should be. It's the singing part is already bad for me. I'm just my voice doesn't behave. <clears throat> I'm sure I'm singing wrong, and I don't. You know, somebody will tell me someday how to do it right. But uh, there's also just a lot of fast. I'll do I'll do a little bit more. Because if I am going to do this, I skipped a little cadenza, that's fine. Ta ta ta. So, and the problem is, you've got to be like, like, ta ta ta. You know, I, I, I'd almost need to be mic'd to, for any of this to come across in a splashy recital hall. And so then, of course, you can take your time with it, but now it's not as, it's not as dramatically exciting. Um. Uh, sorry. This is the piece, right? So I'm sure everybody's having a blast listening to me do this dumb stuff. But if you don't perform it, you may as well just not ever play pieces like this, right? And the performance is what I have to practice. I suck. I, I absolutely, my face goes beat red when I have to do stuff like this at first. But then you get over it. And then you can give a really good performance of, I mean, com they say comedy is the hardest thing to do in, in acting, right? And it's very much true of music, uh, in some ways even more so because we're so untrained. We don't have any of the skills. And so you not only have to learn them, but also perform them while you perform your instrument. And I'm not saying it's harder than acting. Act acting is very difficult, uh, I'm sure. But uh, it's, it is acting is what I'm saying. It's a little bit of acting. And so we're so, we're so bad, we're so far from practicing that in a normal setting, uh, even though we shouldn't be. So that's my... That's my 10 cents on, uh, and I very well may do this piece just for the laughs. For the middle schoolers especially, they'll get a much bigger kick out of this than the Plogue. So there we go. All right. I knew this was going to kill my lip. I didn't know it was going to kill it this quick. But since nobody decided to ask questions, uh, I will have to just kind of carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. So uh, this is uh, for Gabriel Cassone. Uh, which, if you don't know his playing, incredible trumpet player. Um, and it's by Tony Plogue, who wrote uh, just so many uh, wonderful pieces for brass quintet, for horns, for trumpet choir, I mean, for trumpet solo. Uh, if you don't already know Animal Ditties, he, he wrote a modern version of... Uh, trumpet and piano setting of the music or of new music i should say to ogden nash poetry and ogden nash poetry is like really st silly stupid poetry about animals and uh so you can get that uh animal ditties is what he calls it i i don't remember what the original books were called but they also had settings of music uh they aren't very good necessarily they're just kind of nursery rhymes in the original books and he's done a really nice job of you know, trumpet parts, and, and it's trumpet, narrator, and piano. So anyway, that's what he's most famous for in our world. But this is Postcards, which is a really, really nice piece. And the trick with Postcards is it's, it's, not, um, it's not strictly tonal, but it's not really that far out either. Um, it has a very G minor kind of feel to it, and uh, it's, it's got some stuff in it for sure. But most of this stuff is, is idiomatic to trumpet, and that's what's great about Tony Plogue. He is a trumpet player, uh, and so he knows what is and isn't possible. And he's not afraid of giving you some hard fingerings, maybe, but he's not going to put anything on the page that he can't play. 
And, and then he proves that by actually recording most of his works. So for what it's worth, you can get this recorded by many people. It's not impossible, even though sometimes it feels like it. So, <clears throat> but like I said, this is very approachable for even a high school uh, soloist. And I, I, would, I actually recommend it because if you can play up to a high C, actually, I think you need a D flat uh, for the last movement, maybe. But if you can play up to high C, you can play this piece. Um, you have to have some endurance, but you're, of course, because it's unaccompanied. So, you know, that's to be expected. All right. So well, we're, we're not going to start at the beginning because, um, oh, okay, we got a question. Yes, thank, thank goodness. Uh, a little off topic, but my student asks, have I been messing with Hickman's pucker ideas much? Uh, and he's a big fan. Yeah. Um, what I have discovered is that I was teaching this for a while without calling it that. And I still don't want to call it that. It just sounds pu like pucker, pucker up kid. I don't know. Like, it's just, uh, I don't. And I was calling it pooching in, the, in a couple of uh, classes ago. I don't like that either. Um, sticking your lips out. <laughs> you know, but it's really about, it's more about firmness, right? Behind the bottom and top of the rim and having sort of a posture to that. And so what I, what I'm, I have been experimenting with it. What I'm learning is that it helps protect me from some of the bad habits that I might have in terms of pressure or letting down the air, but it also helps me be accurate in both the higher and lower registers, which just means I'm not engaging. I'm not being sort of engaged enough with the musculature sometimes when I play I'm trying to rely on the air but then I'm just kind of it's just air and passive pressure and I think it's because we're all we're all afraid of like biting the notes out on trumpet right we don't want to hold the notes with our face but maybe we can hold everything a little more right that that might be not such a bad idea so that I'm I'm enjoying it I'm I'm also learning the way I used to teach it and then I'm going to teach it again is that you put your finger here and you press into your face and resist that. Okay, good. And then once you feel that feeling, memorize the feeling of the interface between your finger and your lips. And now put your finger in the same spot, but instead of pressing your finger in, press your lips out towards the finger and make the feeling the same, right? And it's actually slightly different muscles, but then you can use that and so I'm, I'm actively doing that as I play. Um, so, okay, there's, there's a couple of spots. We're not going to start at the beginning. Uh, this one won't take very long at all. It's two pages, and there's all, very little different materials. It's just kind of shuffled around different ways. So I'm going to start with the hardest material for me. Um, let's see where, if I can find that. Okay. Crescendo, sorry. You gotta go fast enough, but not too fast. If you go, if you go, bum, 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 da -da -da -dun -dun -dun, that's fine until you get to, you know, that, that's, I mean, I guess you could try, but, and if you go, bum, 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 which I've had students do, uh, Boy, does it take a long time to play this one movement, right? So it's got, you got to get the right tempo for you. And it's good to sort of suss it out as you practice it and then figure out like, oh, that part's really hard for me. How fast can I do that? Let me see if I can do the whole piece that fast. And then what tempo is that, right? Um, let's see. So you can hear why this piece is sort of rough. So any faster than that and I start not being able to look at the notes, but that just means I need to memorize them. This one definitely needs a lot of markings, right? Half step markings. Drive 
towards that crescendo every time. Otherwise, we'll forget to do it, and it'll, dimin it'll diminuendo on its own based on the width between the intervals and the, the height of the top notes. <clears throat> so it needs to be like twice that fast. I could, I could work on this whole section, I guess. It's easier for me because I know the piece. So... Mark some of that. Whole step. Half, half, not a smiley face. Another half step, another whole step, another half step, another half step. So I'll go back in and mark it better later, but. This is the kind of thing I need, I'm going to need to do in this piece. Uh, and I'm not going to bore you guys with it now, but I got to do it in smaller chunks. I, get, I probably need to sing it more. Uh, but then after this, it's, it's not terribly difficult. Uh, I'll play the whole thing if I can, maybe in pieces, just to kind of get it, get through it, right? <clears throat> and we'll go too fast. We're going to go the, the speed that I can get through the whole thing. I can work up the licks. I'll just kind of hack through them, uh, with it, hopefully without stopping. And that'll give me a sense of whether or not, sometimes it's good to push yourself a little beyond what you've actually worked on. You don't have to ever do it, but sometimes you you accidentally learn that you can in fact play it faster than you thought. And if you, the only, if, as long as you don't stop, the only other thing you can ever learn is you were right all along and you still need to practice it more, more slowly, right? So let's go, let's decide how fast we're gonna go. No, well, I guess eighth notes probably is the thing I should think about. Let's go on 160. That's what I'm going to go <clears throat> to the eighth note. rest here too long. If I was only playing this, I wouldn't. It's only a quarter rest. But since I am doing it for live stream and said I would break it up, this is the breakup. Okay, let's keep going. hear why it's kind of a dramatic exciting piece it's not very long unfortunately 
um, not for me, but for the, the recital. But it, it's, it has a nice just kind of finality to it. And uh, I love that the whole piece kind of feels like it's in G minor. And then you end on this C minor, um, this C minor triad, right? E flat, C, G, and C. And uh, he really drives home the G sound so much so because there's an A flat next to it that you don't necessarily, you just remember that the piece sounded minor and you don't really think like, oh, but G minor and C minor are not like simpatico, right? Like it should be G major and C minor, right? But not in natural minor. Uh, and also, who cares about major or minor for the G chord? It's just G, right? Just dominant sound, like the dominant function, not like dominance, but the, 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 it's the five sound and it goes, it wants to go, the first time we hear a full, fully fleshed out like C sound is the end, right? But we've heard little tidbits of it in the, the first, there's a high C on the first page. Um, where else is there a C? There's, uh, we, get some, we get some C naturals thrown in there uh, in the lines um, and a lot of like B natural up. So like G, uh, A flat down to G and B natural up to C. So he kind of, he kind of hints at the fact that we're going to end up in C of some sort, uh, because he's kind of collapsing it into a, into this open fifth. Right. So I just, I think this piece is so well written and it's very easy to sell the piece. You just play what's on the page and do a little bit of music. And it really, it really, uh, just, it sounds musical, and so, and that's a, a tribute to the, the piece and to Tony Plog. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm uh, I'm spent, man. I I've, I did a brass quartet rehearsal, and I uh, I did a warm up with a bunch of people on Zoom, and uh, now we've now we're we've we've done a lot of unaccompanied music for an hour. So I'm I'm gonna call it pretty soon. But if anybody has questions left over. I'll wait maybe 20 or 30 more seconds to see if any pop up, but type them in the chat right now because I'm on a 26 second delay. And so I'll, I'll just kind of chat. Uh, the pieces we didn't do, I'll just, uh, I'll just talk through. Uh, we didn't do the Fischertoll profiles. These are really great because they're very short, but you can do as many of them as you want. And none of them are terribly difficult to learn. Um, and they, they tend to alternate fast and slow. So you can do any pair of them, even if that pair isn't a sanctioned pair. They're all named after people in pairs. Uh, so like this is number five, two MG, and it's gonna be number one and number two in that set. And then number six to DO, that's Dale Owen, oh, uh, Olson, excuse me. And uh, he actually signed my copy right here. I'm very happy to have met him. Um, so anyway, this is my, and I've done these a million times. I've got my little, uh, uh, sticky notes and things on them telling me uh, where, to, where to practice or which ones I'm doing. Uh, another one we didn't do is this Rautavera piece, which is really cool. And normally I do this one if I can talk to the audience for a second because I can say if you ever wanted to uh, if you ever wanted to try to sound like laser beams on your trumpet, this is the piece for you. I guess I can play a little bit of it while I wait for questions. Uh, the beginning, the, the first page isn't isn't terribly wonky. It's, you know, just kind of this whole tone sound. Maybe not even whole tone, sort of modal, sometimes whole tone, sometimes something else. Um, very out of time, although I didn't play it out of time at all. But then you get to the second page and the whole piece changes. So you end of the first page is... Well, we get to ban someone. Excellent. Um, and to block list. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, 
almost. It's so hard to hear because you have to do all alternate fingerings, but I also cursed in my stream. I'm sorry. Don't tell anybody. It's crazy, right? It's nuts. But just the laser beams is so great. And when you actually practice it and really hear the notes, then it's not just noise, it's like musical. You know, you can really do it, and I'm not doing a great job. It's also supposed to be stringendo, but I can basically do it as fast as I can do it, and that's it. Um, it's also really interesting notation wise. So this is, this is uh, uh, I didn't actually even introduce it. This is the Rautavera Tarantara, right, which is a type of dance. Uh, I don't think that you could do the Tarantara to this piece necessarily, but I believe it's inspired by it. And he's got a great, look at that picture of him on there. He's a serious musician, man. So that's one we didn't do. Like I said, Fisher Tull we didn't do. Henderson, we've been over a couple times. It's, it's mostly, it's hard to read. Like the second movement, for instance, we worked on once, but it's in like a duet part. There's like two different things to look at. And you play them both, but they're part of different uh, voices. And then the last movement, uh, movement five, is actually written out in multiple staves for that same reason, so that you still have to play it. But it's really, it's hard for me. I, pianists do this all the time, right? But trumpet players, we're not used to reading across multiple staves and being responsible for that. And so uh, that's, that's why we're not doing Henderson right now. It's still a work in progress. Uh, we talked about Hoffman four miniatures. Uh, those are all also works in progress. Uh, I've almost got one and two ready to go, and I haven't worked on three yet. Uh, the Folk Arabi, Shazam, which I highly recommend. Another one we didn't do is called Music for Audience and Soloist. This one's by Elliot Schwartz, and this one is Bonkers uh, Bananas, Banana Sandwich. It is, a, a, but amazing. Uh, basically, you separate the audience up into four groups, and you have four conductors, which you can nominate from the audience if you have like a, all musicians in the audience, or you can have them set up beforehand. Uh, they do need to be dressed up like they're conductors, right? Um, but basically, you spend like 10 minutes and you train the audience. So each conductor takes their section and they sort of very quietly train each uh, of their section, uh, their, their audience section in four different sounds that they're gonna be able to make. So uh, I'll, I'm not going to ruin the whole piece for you, but some of the sounds are um, clap your hands, right? That's easy. Uh, they all have a spoken word. This one is freeze, medium, loud, and be prepared to hold the E part of the syllable uh, for the duration of the sound. So that, that one might, the conductor might go freeze. And you have to sort of do that together. So meanwhile, they're making all these crazy sounds uh, sort of aleatorically around the... It's not aleatory because it's being directed, but it has that effect. Um, and the, audio, the, the soloist starts playing on stage. It's a completely improvised piece. So you start... It just says start with a long sound, like a sustained kind of thing. And uh, you just... Start on stage as formally dressed as possible, and then you move around the audience and you try to just sort of interact with different groups. And then the B section of the piece is you have to have a secondary instrument somewhere that you're going to play for the middle part of the piece. And so you like that's hidden somewhere in the in the audience or you know uh, on your person or whatever. I use the kazoo. I've used the uh, king miniature trumpet. All kinds of things. And then. You switch back to your main instrument, you get back on the stage, you play more sustained sounds, and then the best part is the end of the piece. Uh, you, you, you have to say the word never 
dramatically. So I always, I try to scream it and then run off the stage and have somebody operate the lights and turn the lights off. But you can do, it, ha it has a lot of suggestions. So this is the piece I always want to do, uh, Elliot Schwartz, but uh, you have to set it up for a long time and you also have to have the right kind of audience. And it is supposed to be maybe mildly funny, but uh, not necessarily. And you can play anything you want. Uh, it, it suggests that you might play excerpts that people know or excerpts from other instruments uh, or famous pieces that people might kind of understand uh, or that you can just like mimic the sounds they make. So anyway, these are the kinds of pieces I'm really into. But uh, anyway, that was that was sort of a look at some different unaccompanied music for trumpet. This is all very hard in a general sense. Uh, obviously, the audience and solos piece is as hard as you make it. Um, but, you know, the, all, the different, all the different pieces are of varying difficulties, but I would say these are all on the harder scope. I, didn't, uh, I don't know where my Henza is, but Henza should be in this list too. Uh, but it's too, it's, I could play the whole thing, but I don't want to, uh, it, it's not really palatable for high school, middle school either. Uh, the first movement's real high intensity, but the rest of it's a little bit beeps and boops for them. So, oh, my, my dad just got to interlocking. Great. I'm glad. I hope they. I hope they feed you. That was a contentious issue recently that they were taking the food aspect away from some of us. So, good luck getting food. I'm sure you'll find some place. But anyway, uh, that's going to be it for me today. Um, but thank you guys for coming and kind of hanging out with me and checking out all this stuff. And uh, yeah, good luck uh, to my student with the uh, embouchure kind of stuff. That's. I, I think it's helping me and I hope it's helping you and uh, I will look forward to whatever the non-trumpet questions are off air. So, um, all right, I guess until next time, everybody, uh, which might not be next week on time, right? Uh, because I'm going to be playing this stuff at this time. So uh, look for me maybe an hour later or maybe a day later or maybe just some other time. Uh, but normally I'll be back on a Friday schedule after that. So anyway, Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you.